we will go through the basics of Adobe Premiere and we will work on an exercise together for you to be able to edit and upload your videos to YouTube. We will see how to create projects in Premiere, how to import files, editing with basic transitions, color grading, audio mix, how to create titles, how to export your videos. This is what you will be achieving today. I've got time now. And time is money. <laughs> so they say. I've got time to breathe. To listen to the new sound of the city. Time is money. So they say. I've got time now. And I wouldn't trade it for all the gold in the world. As you can see, a lot of interesting stuff, so let's get going. First of all, I prepared some footage for you guys, the same footage I'm using so we can work together. Just go in the description tab down here below, you will find a link which automatically will download the footage to your machine. As we wait, let's create our new project in Premiere. So first of all, let's open up Premiere. When you are here on your desktop, you can press Apple N to open a new Finder window you go to Applications and Adobe Premiere will be here if you have installed it or usually I save an icon down here in my dock. So that's what I do. I press my icon and it will open up the software. Righty, so to create a new project, guys, we go here, New Project. And now there's a few settings we want to go through. First of all, I'm going to name my project and I will call it I've Got Time because our video talks about time. And also I'm gonna add editing exercise. What I do, I'm gonna browse where I wanna save it, which is my hard drive right here. I create a new folder with a date and I give the same name of the project in Premiere. I've got time editing exercise and press on create here we are. Now what I do, I create a subfolder called AP Project, which is um, Adobe Premiere Project. This is my workflow, guys. You can customize your, you know, your folder tree as you as you like. But this is my personal workflow. And then I choose uh, choose. <laughs> Here we go. A couple of um, extra things. Here, the video you can either see the time code on your timeline or the frame down here. Uh, the frames. So it's up to you. I, I choose time code because that's usually it's usually more more helpful when you import um, footage recorded on cameras with the time code. So it matches the video camera time code. Capture were not interesting so far unless you're actually capturing from tapes, which I rarely use anymore. And audio, uh, that's fine as it is. Scratch disks. Now here, I want usually I think by default it will comes with documents selected and uh, which means all the captured footage or rendered footage from this particular project will be saved on your machine in the documents folder. But what I usually do, I save everything in the projects folder which I just created. So just select same as project for all these um, options basically. Go one by one and just select same as project. When you've done that, click OK. And we are now inside Premiere. As you can see, there are a lot of tabs all around your monitor. And uh, these are the main tabs I'm going to use for this particular project. You can customize your workspace by going uh, in Window right here on the top menu, Workspaces. And then there are already some presets. So when you swap those things, if you press on on the different ones. Basically, the tabs will change position. But this is a good one for me right now. And also, you can save your workspace by going again here and save as a new workspace. You just name it and you're ready to go. 
By the way, guys, I'm going to break down all the subjects I'm talking about today in terms of tabs, frame rate, aspect ratio, uh, resolutions in other different vlogs. So consider to subscribe now because there's a lot of things to learn and I can't squeeze them into uh, this video right now. But quickly, basically, your project tab is where all your footage will be. So audio, clips, recorded files, captured files, everything will go here in this tab. Then you have the program tab, which is basically your screen, your monitor, where you will see your video and you will see in a second. Then you've got the FX tab, FX control, Lumetri color, which is, which is for color grading and the audio track mixer. Most important, guys, is the timeline. So in your timeline, you will have your sequence with the clips and your audio, and that's your actual editing space. On here on the side, you will see the toolbar with all the uh, tools, basically. Okay, first things first, we want to import our files, but we need to grab our files. So let's go back to Finder by pressing Command Tab, and you will see all the softwares open in your computer. We go in Finder, go to Downloads, and now you will see this folder if you have downloaded the material. Double click on it, and it will unzip your uh, your uh, files. So in the material, guys, I provided you with some audio stuff. So the music track, a couple of sound effects, and a voiceover. So we're gonna work on all these three aspects of the audio mix, and then all the footage, so 10 clips. What I do, I press Command N to open a new Finder window. I go to my hard drive where we saved our project, and I copy and paste these two um, folders in, in the main folder. So everything that is part of the project is, is there, basically. I'm gonna close this window. Let's go back to Premiere, and we want to import our files, as <laughs> Premiere is suggesting right here. There are different ways to do so. First of all, you can double-click here on this window, and it will open up a Finder window. You can, uh, again, browse where you save the files, and just select what you need and press import. But I'm not gonna do that. You can either go to file menu right here, import, and again, same thing, you will browse. A shortcut with the keyboard is command I. It will open the same window, or you can also drag and drop from your finder, just selecting what you want and dragging it into Premiere, but we're not going to do that because I show you the last way. If you go to Window again and go to Media Browser, you will have this tab. In this tab, you basically browse again through your hard drives. And we go in Project and select the two folders we need. Then right click on them and select Import. But here we are. Now in the Project tab, you will see the two uh, folders we need, so the audio and the footage. What uh, Premiere doesn't do sometimes, it doesn't import the folders where you have one only item. As you can see, the music and the voiceover uh, folders are not there anymore, but I'm going to create it to keep it tight. So we just go down here, there's a new bin or a folder, whatever window. We call it music, and this is our music track. We'll drop it in there. And same for this file, this is the voiceover. As you can see, I've got time VO English, voiceover in English. New bin, and we call it VO, voiceover, and dragging that in here. The music folder has been saved outside of the audio folder for some reason, we drag it in. And now we got all the audio, all the files related to audio in the audio folder, I like to be tidy. And in the footage one, you have the 10 clips, the video clips. We now want to create a timeline. And actually, we're going to create two timelines in two different ways. And again, this is part of my workflow, personal workflow. It's up to you to do whatever you want. But one way is to do so. First of all, our footage is being, has been recorded in 4K, which is four times the HD, so much bigger than HD files, which is better for us, and i tell you why in a second. The first way to create a new sequence is to simply uh, drag one of the clips into the timeline. Here we go. 
and now you've got a timeline created and you can start seeing our our clip right there so if you if you scroll through your timeline you can see your video playing all right here we go nice and now your your sequence has been saved here in the footage folder which i don't like so what i do i you can either press actually this icon to create a new bin or just click right click on on the top and create a new bin there and we call it edits and i simply drag my uh, new sequence in there and i actually call it uh, footage and again this is part of my workflow and what i do now i go in the footage so which is this sequence and I'm gonna drag and drop the rest of the clips in there. So you select the first one, go at the bottom, um, hold shift on your keyboard and, and click with the mouse. And now you drag everything else on your timeline. What I'm gonna do is to reduce the size, the extension of the timeline. And to do so, you can either take one of these, uh, the two, one of the two extremities here of this uh, uh, scroll bar and extend it through the timeline or one of the shortcut with the keyboard is simply pressing minus or plus so minus will squeeze the timeline down plus will extend it very handy so i usually recommend to use the keyboard now you've got all your clips on the timeline you can scroll through and see what you've got there and you start having an idea of what the video is about i'm going to close down this uh, folder i don't need it and second way to create a, a timeline is actually by going here in file and then you can go in new and press on sequence or as you can see Premiere is suggesting to press Apple or command N and that's what I do again use your keyboard when you can but let's for now create it here in your timeline you've got different options so first of all you want to know more about your footage for example, the frame rate and the uh, size, the aspect ratio. And to do so, you've got a couple of options again. But for now, I'm telling you that the footage was recorded in 4K at 24 frames per second. For this sequence, we're actually creating it in HD. As I mentioned before, the original files are in 4K, so four times the HD. And we're going to create an HD sequence because having the 4K footage allow us to reframe uh, very nicely the um, the clips in in an HD sequence so and I don't need 4k for now so let's create an HD sequence and to do so again you can select any of these actually to be honest and then you can just go in settings and uh, that doesn't really matter but this is very important so the frame rate as we said, our frame rate was 24 frames per second, and that's important to keep as the, the same as the footage. So we select 24. Oh, and luckily we already have an HD uh, frame set up for us. So 1920 by 1080, okay? So these are the pixels on the horizontal and vertical uh, lines. And we are just gonna press okay. That's, we're gonna rename our sequence just by pressing on the name. And this time I'm gonna call it, I've got time. Um, usually I put the aspect ratio, which is 16, nine. So uh, 169, it comes up like that. And also we will add the duration at the end when we actually know the duration of the video, but I already know, and it's 35 seconds and we press ok now i want to drag this into the edits so everything is there as you can see now you've got two sequences on your timeline one is the footage and one is the actual video we're going to work on to make it more visible you can literally take one and drag it to the bottom so now you have two different sequences and you can see both of them at the same time Let's quickly go back to how to find out the frame rate of your clips. There's two ways, one in Premiere. So in Premiere, you will see here in the project tab, frame rate, 
right there in the top menu. If you don't see that, then go next to name, right click on it, and you will see this metadata display uh, text. Click on that, and now you will have options to select what you want to see there. So all the information you want to see about the clips. In this case, you go down here on the first line, Premiere Pro uh, Project Metadata, open that little arrow there, and you will see all these labels you can tick in, um, you can tick in and off basically. So we're gonna tick off a few of them. I'm interested in the label, which is the color here you'll see next to your clips and items. The frame rate, so make sure frame rate is selected. That's important. And then I don't really care about the rest. Um, so apart from one, which is called video info, and it will give you the size of the clip. So it will tell you if it's HD, 4K, and so on. So make sure those two are selected frame rate and video info, and then I don't really care about the rest usually. Press OK. Now, if you go back to your project tab, you will be able, you should be able to see your frame rate, 24 frames per second. That's the first method. If you want to know this information beforehand, before actually opening Premiere, go back to Finder. So press your Command tab on the keyboard, go to Finder, and now you're going to go in your clips on your footage and open, open, open up one of your clips by any player you have on your machine, VLC, for example. It will open up. And here we go. When you are in VLC, for example, you press Command-I, and that works for a quick time as well. So Command-I, or you can actually find also in Windows, Media Information, and then here you've got three options. Go to codec details and you will see there the size of your clip, which is 4K, so 1496 by 2160 and 24 frame rate. That's how you find out the information about your clip. Let's go back to Premiere. Let's get to the core of the video. We're going to work on the edit. And the first thing I do is to work and to clean the footage. We go in our footage sequence right there. We scroll through. And as you can see, there's a couple of time lapses. They're all steady. There's not shakiness, anything. So that's all good to go. Okay, what do we have here? In this clip, we have, as you can see, the clip is shaking a lot in the beginning. So if you scroll through your timeline, you will see, you can see it's shaky here. So we don't need all that and we are gonna crop it. And to crop it now, we can either go here, this icon in the toolbar, the razor, or shortcut is to press C on your keyboard, which is cut, C for cut. You go to the point on the timeline where you want to chop your clip and you just chop it on top. Then if you press V, that's just the normal cursor, like the selection tool. You click on it and you uh, press delete and it will delete your the clip you don't need. I keep scrolling down, see if there's anything. Okay, that's all more or less good to go. But again, you can chop, you know, all the parts you don't need, basically. Okay, very important tip, guys, is to keep saving your project. So quick way is Command S, as you can see, or you go on File and press Save. Just do that at any, any minute, literally, because you never know if your computer crashes or something goes wrong, you will have the latest version of your project saved. And it will save you a lot of time, actually, because <laughs> if you don't save it, whoo, you might lose hour, hours of work. Now that we've gone through the footage, the next thing I would do for this particular project is to start creating the story through the music and the voiceover. First thing, voiceover. So let's go here in audio voiceover and if you double click on the file the waves of the audio will pop up in your source tab so basically the difference between program and source tab in the source you will see basically what's related to the clip only that you clicked but the program is showing you what's on your timeline okay let's open up our voiceover let's see what's there i've got time now and time is money <laughs> So they say. Okay, as you can see, we're talking about time. It's a 20 second voiceover, 
what you want to do is to literally drag and drop it in the first track right there of your timeline. We have the voiceover on our sequence now. We want to add the music and build the feel and the vibes. What I've done, guys, I've already selected some section of the track. So what you want to do is exactly using exactly the sections I've used. So we double click here on the track. If you go in our project uh, panel, double click on the track and the track will pop up as wave forms right here in your source tab. Now I go directly to the time codes. Basically, you want to increase, extend the size here so you can see the waves a bit better by dragging the extremities here on the scroll bar again. And the first section starts at 106. So you just go here on the time code and literally type 0106. Then you press enter and also you press the I key on your keyboard. It, it will create a Ning mark of your section and we're going to create an out as well so uh, automatically the software will select just the part of the of the song we want so the out mark will be 112 again type 0112 press enter and then press the o uh, button of your keyboard now you've got this uh, brighter green section as you can see which is the part of the song we need to drag it onto the timeline, you go here in this icon, wave icon, and you press it and you drag it to the beginning of the sequence. Now we try to play it. Okay, it's definitely too loud. First thing we're going to do is to decrease the volume of the music. To do so, you can go in, in your mixer right here on the side. And basically, you will see different channels. Each channel represents a layer on your timeline down there. So here we go. We've got, I'll show you there. You, as you can see, as you can see in your timeline, you've got four audio track, one, two, three, and four. Same in your audio mixer. So each channel represents one of your layer down. So you've got one, two, three, and four. Exactly. Go on the channel two and bring this lever down. As you can see, this is the volume lever. So just go down. Actually, what we can do is to play here and to play the video or the track, you play, you press the um, space bar or this play button on the mixer. So just the bar is easier. We go to the beginning. And now as it's playing, you bring the, you pull the lever down. Time now. And time is money. <laughs> so they say. So we go around minus 15. You can also type it in if you want to. Minus 15. So everyone is on the same page. Perfect. That's the first section. Now we go back here. Double click on the track. You guys can just type in this time code, which is 13119. So just type 13119, press enter, and then press the I button again to create a Ning mark. And we go down to... 14021. Type 14021, press enter and press O. And we have a new section and we literally just drag it next to our first section right here on the timeline. And now we play through. <laughs> so they say, I've got time to breathe, to listen to. Okay, we can fix that a little bit. There's a tiny jump. So we go on the timeline, increase the size. And also if you use these uh, extremities, you can ex expand the vertical size of the tracks and we can see it better. So we can move them around, see where the waves here are starting to go up and we trim it there. So if you go on the clip and when you see this anchor, basically you can drag it back. And now we bring this back closer and see if we if we play smoother <laughs> so they say not bad to, to make it smoother we can add the transition so go here on the cut uh, right click apply default transition and it will create a crossfade and now we again you go you select the crossfade go on the brackets and bring them back together so they say Cool. We barely can hear the transition there. 
we're going to save it. So what I want to do, I'm going to add a transition here, a fade as well. Um, so again, you go to the end of your audio clip or the music, right click on your mouse, apply default transition, and we're going to extend it this time to the left because I want to have a longer uh, fade. And we're going to actually cut it a little bit as well. Coolio. Last part of the music, again, we double click on the track. And this time, guys, go to the time code, 222, enter, and then press I, and then go at the end of the track and press O, and you've got this section selected. Go to the wave icon here, bring it down to the sequence. Now, if you type here 21 second, that's more or less where we're gonna place the final part of the track. So you just drag it there. And we leave it there for a second. We're gonna work on the voiceover. So we're gonna chop the voiceover into different parts. So extend your timeline, press C or use the razor tool there in the tool bar and just Let's just chop what we don't need. So we're going to separate each clip and you can see each clip by the waveforms. So where, where the waves are zero equal to zero, that's where you don't have any sound. So we're going to chop all these parts we don't need. Uh, this kind of stuff. I'll just do it quickly. Now pressing V. We have this selection tool and we are going to select each of the parts we don't need. And you can uh, hold shift and select, click on all the different parts and then hit cancel. Here we go, we got the separated files right now. So we start with the voiceover at three seconds. So go to three seconds on your timeline. We select everything and shift it down. That's where the voiceover comes in. Time is money. Cool, <laughs> So they say. Second part, time is money. And time is money. It comes in at, at five seconds. And time is money. <laughs> so they say. We leave it there so far. I've got time to breathe, to listen to the new sound of the city. Okay, that's what we want uh, so far. Okay, so we have a build up. We basically are breathing and listening to the new sound of the city. And now we have a pause. And in this pause, we want kind of silence. To listen to the new sound of the city. That's why we have the fade out of the music. Then we come in again with uh, with this tr piece of the voiceover. Time is money. Time is money just before the beginning of the end of the track. So literally there at more or less 20 seconds. Time is money. Time is money. Music comes in. Then we have at 22 seconds. So they say. So they say. Hey. We're going to bring this back as well around 20, 24. I've got time now. I've got time now. And before the music ends, maybe here. And I wouldn't trade it for all the gold in the world. Okay, maybe even earlier, around 26, that's where we have the last part. And I wouldn't trade it for all the gold in the world. Perfect. Now, that's fine so far. It's a bit longer than, it goes up to 40 seconds. We want to squeeze it in 35, but we'll get there. Finally, we'll start with the clips. So let's go back here. Actually, I'm going to drag my project tab on the side again. I think I moved it before and move everything back here we go so i can see the old uh footage as well i'm gonna save it command s don't forget okay it's finally time to work on the clips you can find your clips here on the footage but we created this sequence as we said before right so we're gonna take these clips and as you can see the video clip here as you can see v is video and a audio so the clip has an audio clip, which we don't need. So to unlink the two, you literally press Command L and it will unlink the video and the audio. So we can just work on the, on the video. 
Uh, what you can do actually is to select all your clips, Command L, and now you only have uh, the, the video uh, selected. Okay, let's grab the first clip and bring it to our timeline. So this clip, as you can see, is in 4K, so it's much bigger than the HD frame. So what we want to do to scale it down, first of all, and to do so, we go in the Effects Controls tab, go in Scale and type 50%. And now you've got the full size clip right there, which is great. Oh, so the duration of this clip is, is, is huge, it's 16 seconds, more or less. So we want to narrow it down. To do so, you go on the clips, select it, right click on it, and then speed duration. And now we're going to speed it up of 700%. And as you can see, the clip just narrowed down. And now we're going to um, cut it on the beat of the music. Here we go. That's it. So that's where we want to cut it at 207. I just chop it there. We got to clip number two. So again, here in our footage sequence down here. This is our second clip. We just bring it up. And again, we want to scale it down. You can either click on the clip, go here, scale it down again, or you can go on clip number one, right click and do copy. Now you go on clip two, right click, paste attributes. And basically you will paste all the attributes of clip one into clip two. So you want to have motion ticked right there. Press OK and your clip is now scaled down. And as you can see here, it's scaled down to 50%. We're going to cut it to the music as well. So, and time is mine. so right there at 507, that's where we are going to cut our clip. Clip number three, that's our clip number three when we introduce the character coming in. So there's a lot of footage right there, we, which we need to chop. And uh, again, let's scale it down to 50. Here, when you see the hand opening the, the door with the handle, that's where we're going to chop it. And literally, it's a, a time code 0807. More or less, yeah, we're going to press C, Razor tool, and delete the second part we don't need. No, and time is money, <laughs> so they say. Clip number four, guys. Okay, we actually have a close-up of the hand opening. We just drag it up there again. We want to scale it down again. So go to 50%. And we are going to take it when we see the hand coming into frame. So more or less there. Okay, so that's when I'm going to chop it and I stick it to the previous one. So we have this motion. It's actually too late. So what I want to do is to anticipate the first clip. So what you want to do is to bring this clip to um, a layer above extend it in the front and push it down slide it down and cut the end of it until you have the end coming in and then that's when we cut to the close up perfect that's it's working better okay let's play and time is money <laughs> so they say i've got time to breathe okay smooth perfect now we go to clip number Five. This is definitely a long clip, so we need to cut it down. When we are close to 15 seconds, that's where you just chop it, either with a razor or you just drag down the handle. And now we're going to introduce the city, the empty city, and the uh, quietness of the place with the clip number six so just grab your clip number six down here to the timeline and again scale down 50 percent perfect we go to 18 seconds and we chop it and we're gonna add clip number seven which is a second shot of the empty street and again we're gonna scale it down 
Okay, now, as you can see here, this clip is a bit crooked. And that's when the 4K comes handy because we can literally scale it up a little and then rotate it so the lines are straight. As you can see, the walls here are not straight compared to the um, edges of the frame. So what you want to do is to go to scale, go to 53%. It will increase the size of the clip and also rotation, try to press one. And the clip will rotate of one degree and that's now you've got the lines parallels, which is great. That's what we want. Okay, guys, actually, let's go back to clip number four and let's bring all the clips earlier because uh, there's a bit of shakiness here, which we don't like, as you, as you can see. So at 11.11, that's where we're going to bring all our clip forward, backwards, actually. Into the new sound of the city. Okay, clip eight. In clip eight, what do we have? We've got the birds, the birds. And we drag it up here. We can use a second layer if you want to. At around 18 seconds, that's when we want the clip A to come in. Okay, we scale it down again. Go to 50. Okay, that's a bit crooked as well. As you can see, the antenna is not straight so we're going to increase the size to maybe 53 again and rotation as we did before this time minus one so we'll go anti-clockwise uh minus 1.5 maybe cool that's a bit better and we can chop this down you can either keep it on different layers or on one layers whatever it's better for you but i like it clean and it's a very linear cut so let's put it on one line Time is money. After that sentence, time is money, and the music kicks in again, that's when we're going to chop and uh, uh, cut the clip. So literally on the, on the music, before starting, we delete what we don't need of the clip. Number eight. Time is money. So they say. Okay, so they say. And now we're going to add clip number nine. We're going to bring clip number nine to the sequence. Money. so they say <laughs> it's huge okay we're gonna do let's tie let's try 50% scale it down it's a bit an awkward framing as you can see so what I want to do is to scale it up you can also click on the uh, number and just drag your mouse uh, left and right so that's better maybe that's the size of one so 61 plus I'm gonna move it as well so go on the position and go on the first um, number here 960 and drag it to the right. We're gonna center it, center the image to the frame. And also we're gonna bring it up a little by dragging the second number up. That's a bit better. You can adjust it as, as you want, you know. At around 26, we're gonna chop it. When the music comes in here, bling. And that's where I'm gonna add clip number 10, which is our final clip. Here we go. I drag it there. And of course, I need to scale it down. Now we need to chop this file. I'm going to mute the tracks here. And you want to grab basically the moment where you see my fingers here are already on the rail. So literally there. I'm going to delete all the part I don't need. Bring it back. And sorry, I'm gonna unmute the trucks. And I wouldn't trade it for all the gold in the world. And I just go away. And now I'm gonna add a fade at the end of the video. Actually, I'm gonna yeah do that. Uh, apply default transition. Extend it a little so we have a longer fade into black. And I wouldn't trade it for all the gold in the world. That's the end of our video. What we want to do also, we're going to add the sound effects, but also we want to add the graphic at the end, uh, you know, like a silly graphic to say, subscribe to the channel. And uh, this ending part of the music is too far away. So what I want to do is to chop it there and bring it forward. But to do so, before I drag this forward, add the transition so it's, it's a bit smoother. 
even closer and then I'm gonna add the ending part in the world and that that's when our graphic will come in and we're gonna go to 35 seconds right there you can just type it 35 and bring the clip down add a uh, transition again longer transition here we go perfect before the graphic let's add the sound effects so we're gonna finish the actual cut let's do that so if you go in here in sound effects I don't know what happened to my cursor sorry <laughs> um, if you go to effect 17 Park City Birds that's actually what we're gonna use to reproduce the sound of the city so we don't need this footage timeline anymore so I'm just gonna um, close it down so we got more space for our uh, timeline let's double click on the sound effects and pick the section we need so let's find some birds that's good this section is good uh, you pick whatever you want you want to press I for the in mark and O as well for the out mark and then just drag it down to your timeline and let's search for the moment where we need that so we're opening the window after the voiceover saying to listen to the new sound of the city that's when we want the sound effects to start so we'll bring it there and add the transition fade in as you can see the video really builds up it's it's nice so it goes to listen to the new sound of the city We want to extend these uh, sound effects till the music comes in again. Time is money, so they say. Okay, it's a bit too loud at the end. So what we want to do, we apply a transition, but still that wouldn't do the job. So now I show you a new tool, which is the pen tool. With a pen tool, you can create keyframes either in the audio and video effects and just work on particular parts of the of the clip so you go here on this line as you can see you you have a line on the audio clip that's your volume line so you just uh, click on it and it will create a keyframe then you go further down click again and it will create a new keyframe which you can bring now down a bit lower as you can see the volume will go down time is money so it comes in uh, more nicely perfect there's another effect I want to add when we open the door so let's mute the track and the voiceover to mute it just go here and press M it will mute the tracks you don't need for now so we we search for the okay that's the moment where I want to add the sound effects so this is open door sound effects we just drag it in it's a very short and now we're gonna now we need to match the movement with the sound effects so let's play it a few times okay that's too early I want to put it later okay that's kind of working perfect that's what you want now we play everything together see if the volumes are okay so they say okay the volume of the sound effect is too high as you can see so what you want to do here is literally go on the volume line again and just bring everything down 10 minus 10 I've got time to breathe. okay you can hear there's something there going on but it's not invasive so it doesn't really bother the, the viewer let's work on the audio mix and then I show you the grade and how to create a nice quick title at the end so to to create an audio mix what we need is this tab right here so the audio track mixer very quick tips guys I can't spend much time on it okay you go on your audio track mixer this is this tiny arrow that you can press show hide effects so you want to press on it and these panels will come down so as you can see the last channel is called master that's where we're gonna apply our effects and the first effects I'm gonna apply is called you again sorry you go here you press effect selection in this arrow 
a menu will pop down and we we're going to add a compressor so amplitude and compression and we go to multi band compressor basically a compressor will bring the loudest part of the audio track down so the all audio will be more even throughout the video so that's what we're going to do multi band compressor we double click on the effect so again here double click on it there's a few presets which are very helpful to for the mix so what I like, the one I like, it's called Broadcast. So you go here in this menu, select Broadcast, and your sound. So I'll show you the difference with or without. This is the, the button to bypass the effect. So as I'm playing, I'm not going to talk, but I'm going to just select it and, and you spot the differences. I've got time now, and time is money. <laughs> so they say, I've got time to breathe. Yeah, could you hear that difference? So it, it will basically enhance parts of the audio and it will uh, settle down some of the others. So. so that's the preset I like, which is great. And that's done. Second thing I'm going to add to the master uh, channel here is a hard limiter. So again, you press on the second arrow down here this time because you're going to add an extra effects. Go to amplitude and compression, hard limiter. And the hard limiter basically will create a threshold of your audio volume. So that will never go above the volume you set. And we're going to double click here. And we, in the first option, maximum amplitude, we're going to type minus two. And close the tab. Now, whatever happens on your timeline in terms of audio and volume the volume will never go above minus two decibel so that's a it's a safety net basically now you can uh, if you wanted to if you're not happy with the audio levels you can just go clip by clip and you know increase the volume or decrease the volume of certain clips but i'm happy with the overall uh, performance so we're gonna add the graphics and wrap up the video to create the title first of all i'm gonna create a new bin right here a new folder uh, go in the project tab, right click, new bin, we're going to call it GFX graphics, that's what I, I like to call my, um, my folders, and we go to file, new, and we're going to create a new title, legacy title, we're going to call it subscribe, subscribe, basically I'm going to create a quick title, a subscribe text, with my branding which you don't have to copy so what i do is uh, to create a rectangle here in the shapes and my branding is literally usually a rectangular rectangular shape in orange in an orange um, shade you can change the color of your shapes here on the right hand side as you can see color okay i'm gonna add another tiny rectangular shape on top again it's part of my branding here we go and align it but you guys create a text you know your your own style don't don't copy what I'm doing right now but you can copy that text which is subscribe so you grab the text icon right there text tool and you just go on your canvas and start typing now you don't see the text because it's the same orange of the background so you want to select the text go here and changing maybe to white and here we go it will pop up now you have the fonts here on the side you can change all the fonts you want i already know the name of mine and that's it i'm going to increase the size with the font size until it kind of covers the the box right there maybe you can just scale it up like that subscribe if you haven't done so yet guys go do it uh okay this is too big right so i'm happy with this uh title i just close the tab right here top left and now you will see a new a new item here that went actually into my edits and i'm gonna drag it into the graphics folder what i want to do now is to drag it onto my sequence literally drag and drop 
here we go and I want to start with my graphic when the music comes in again there so this time I don't want to fade I just want a simple sudden um, entrance so it will work this way and trade it for all the gold in the world kind of works what I want to do is to add a tiny um, scaling movement on the graphics so to do so we go to we're going to have our clip selected we're going into we're going at the beginning of the clip with the arrows you can just go up and down and now we go to motion right there scale and we're gonna click on this tiny uh, it's a it's a watch basically so we're gonna press on that one and it will create a keyframe on your scale then we go at the end of the clip at 35 seconds we're gonna actually cut the clip down and here you can go to maybe 10% more, so 110 if you if you want to see better. I think it works. It works. We are missing the color grading. Okay, for color grading, very quickly, we go to create a new adjustment layer. Tip, you need to be on your project tab. So again, go on file, new, and now you have the option to select the adjustment layer. Uh, you you can you know adjust the size of it but that's great it's HD press OK it will put it somewhere on your tab just I put it on the graphics uh, folder again here I can actually close all, everything down now just keep the one with the edits on and I can call you can just click on the name of the adjustment layer call it color grading and you drag it on top of all the layers on your timeline what you want to do you just extend it till the end of the video so on an adjustment layer you can apply any effect the same effect will be applied to all the clips on the timeline and what we're going to do now is to go to um, go up here on your Lumetri color tab which we haven't used yet and which I love and it's gonna be fun now. There's uh, if you click here on basic cor correction next to basic correction, you will see different uh, different different options, different menus. So you can really play with this for forever. But we're going quickly to creative. In creative, you have some presets of LUT of color grade that you can apply to your uh, clips very easily. So what you can do, you go to creative again. You can press next to creative. It will open up this tab and here you can either select some LUTs by scrolling through with the arrows or you can go here in the menu and just look for the one you want and it will also give you a preview of how your your clip will be affected um, so if you click on that that's how my clip will look like throughout the whole sequence but this is too harsh for me what I want is um, a faded look um, kind of bluish that gives me that kind of emotional and sad kind of vibe so there's one called blue steel we're gonna select the blue steel down here SL blue steel but guys you apply whatever you want whatever gives you the best feel for your video and again you can do the same in this video as well so do whatever you like and play with it with the stuff but that's what I like here we go it looks really nice it, it brings the blue up and a bit of highlights and the fades as well so it looks great last thing I'm gonna do is to add some vignette again to isolate the character a bit more so I close down the creative tab I go to vignette down here still in the Lumetri color tab so I'm going to increase the vignetting actually by going in a negative uh, amount I don't know why midpoint that's your midpoint roundness of the vignette i like a square vignette this time with a bit of feather uh kind of an old photo frame if you want something like this you know and i'm gonna put some more fade and that's what i kind of like actually 
And now that's all over the video. So if you play through, you will have the vignette and the color grade all over your clips. Cool, now you can play through the video, see what we achieved today. Also, if you wanna see the long version of this video I made, you can go and check it right here, top uh, right corner of the screen in the card or in the description tab actually down below. Last thing to do is to export the file. So what you wanna do is to go at the beginning of your timeline, press I in again, that's the in mark, and then go at the end of your timeline a second 35, and then go back towards the left of one frame with the arrows, the left arrow on your keyboard, until you will see your graphic uh, popping up. Press O, and you've got the out. Now what we're gonna do is to go to File, and you can do Export Media. The shortcut for this on your keyboard is Command M. So let's do that, let's go back on the timeline, press Command M, and this window will pop up now. This is your video, you can uh, actually preview it here. So make sure everything is there. And now here in format, as you can see, we'll go down and I've got H.264 selected already, which is the format I like for my videos on YouTube. So go and press H.264 and make sure export video and export audio are ticked. That's very important. You go down here in, you can expand actually the window. Make sure you've got your file is in HD, 920, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. That's what you want. And this is important. If you go to bitrate settings, scrolling down, you will see the target bitrate. And uh, at, it's a number 10 now and it will give you the size of the final export down here, 43 megabytes. Try to increase the bitrate until you see, you know, this number growing as much as you want, basically. So the maximum is 50 bitrate. I just go to 50 until the, the final estimate video will be uh, 200 megabytes, more or less, which is still great for YouTube. Coolio. Now, what we want to do is to press on the output name right there, and we're going to browse where we want to save our uh, export, basically. So I go back in our original folder, if you remember, and create a new folder called, I usually call it e uh, web, or you can call it export, whatever. So web, these are my files for the web. Press save, and just save your file. And then press export. This process might take a few minutes, so that's it guys, that was a simple example to show you how with only 10 clips anyone can actually deliver a message. Don't forget people, the most important part of the filmmaking is the story. Now that you have finalized your video, you can upload it somewhere on the web and actually share the link with everyone else down here in the description tab. So I can also go there. I'm very curious to see your version. Now it's time for you to hit the subscribe button. If you learned something new from this video, consider to share it. I will see you in the next one. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Ciao.